Hello. Hi. This is Tana. Well, obviously you're on Facebook, so you can see that I'm Tana. Welcome. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> Good to be here with you. I would like to share with you my thoughts and experience on achieving self-love and self-acceptance. So in order to love yourself and accept yourself, you uh, first want to think about what a self is. What is that self? that you're loving and what are the conditions to love yourself. So one of the tools, and I'll, I'll explain why, one of the tools that I found the most effective in accepting and loving the self is voice dialogue. And the voice dialogue is a method based on the premise that there isn't such a thing like a one self. Uh, there's a sense of self. This is who you know yourself that you are, which is not necessarily the exact same as who you truly are. And, uh, and I'll explain in a moment. So to give you an example, can you think of a time in your life when you were afraid and you were too scared to take a particular kind of action? Lovely. Yeah, me too. Can you think of a time in your life when you were brave and courageous and you went against the fears and against the threats and you took uh, some kind of action that you pursued and you were proud and you overcame the fears? Congratulations. So then does this mean that you are scared or you are courageous? And the answer is yes, both. So if you look at various aspects of the self, you see that you are a multifaceted uh, being and you have traits and impulses and urges and motives and emotions and feelings and some of them are fragmented and some of them are uh, in tension with each other and some of them are in agreement with each other and you are all of that but the sense of self is not uh, so the sense of self is very often fused with certain aspects. This is who I am and that's that. So you take um, part aspects of the self as being equal with your identity, with who you see yourself that you are. And that fusion creates a kind of an addiction to those particular aspects or, or traits and then there are aspects of the self that you have disowned and denied because they're not socially acceptable, they're not pretty, uh, but they're still yours and they're somewhere in the shadow uh, under the radar of your consciousness and other people can see those aspects in you and you can, so that's what we call the shadow. Um, and so that causes some kind of fragmentation and allergies because you, you develop allergies to your very disowned traits as you see them, recognize them in others. So whatever bothers you in others or whatever you envy in others, those are aspects of yourself that you are um, not accessing. They are outside of your uh, awareness. So with voice dialogue, what you do you are taking the various perspectives of the various sub personalities or various aspects of the self. And this does um, a kind of integration in two ways. When you give a voice to aspects of the self that you have disowned, you bring them back home. So the disowned aspects of the self are sometimes fondly referred to as the kids in the basement. You know, you look at greed or you look at uh, a judgment or you look at uh, poor me, self-pity, victimization, or you look at all sorts of traits that are not desirable, they're not pretty. 
and you say, you are not a child of mine. I am not greedy. I'm not angry. I'm not judgmental. Other people are, but not me. So down to the basement with those kids. These are not mine. And by giving a voice to those aspects, you own them and you own them um, because as you, and, and I'm speaking from experience, this is not books, this is from my own personal experience with voice dialogue. When you interview those voices, you actually uncover their absolute valid role that they have in supporting that sense of self, a healthy sense of self. They, they keep that self, sense of self with boundaries and with fulfillment and meeting the needs in place each and every one of those voices. They only turn nasty when they're outside of your consciousness. When you grant them a voice and green light through your conscious awareness, then their purpose becomes constructive and you can integrate them and make them available for you. And so, of course, there's more of you to love because when you realize that all these aspects have a valid and uh, constructive purpose, there's absolutely nothing to deny or judge or disown. And then when you give a voice to those aspects of yourself that you have fused with, you actually take a step back from those um, aspects. So you can only speak about something when you are not at one with that something. So who you are is a subject, the I, and those aspects that you have fused with used to be the subject, but if you give them a voice, you detach yourself and you differentiate yourself between the subject, the self, I, and the object. So those become objects, they become an it. So you can uh, take a, an objective look at various aspects of yourself. And through that differentiation, you disidentify. So you gain, you gain a degree of freedom from those aspects. And that gives you flexibility to consciously express one aspect or another according to the timing, timing and the context. So this in itself, without directly making a, an effort to love and accept yourself, this is a path that allows you to show up more integrated and more, more accepting of all the various aspects of yourself because you recognize that they, they all play um, a role in supporting your healthy sense of self. Now, I can't do a personal development without spirituality and spirituality is transcendence, going beyond the soul identification with a separate self. So spirit is the ground of being, is that which is common uh, where there's no self or other and going beyond the identification of separation of a separate self leads you to relinquish identity into that which has the potential to express any kind of human uh, consciousness, any kind of human trait or behavior. So then and you can express an equality because if it's uh, available to any human being, it's available to you and whether it's positive or negative. So then you, um, does, you have less of that judgment and separation that makes you want to deny certain aspects because you recognize that everything is exactly the way it is and uh, you accept it because this is the reality. And it's not about you personally, but this is exactly what is. And one trait or another may arise in yourself or in another at any given moment. And you may like or dislike it. You may want to cultivate it or you may want to cultivate something else instead, but you don't occupy yourself with judging it and denying it as much, uh, but more towards 
creating that which is kinder, more useful, um, more compassionate. One way to, to look at it is to say, nothing, for, nothing human is foreign to me. So if you recognize any kind of trait or um, impulse or quality or emotion in any human being, whether you like it and admire it and envy it or whether you um, loathe it and judge it and are repulsed by it, it's shared with you. And so when you recognize that we are part of the same and we have strength, every human being has parts that are stronger and parts that are weaker, um, the, the separate self likes to compare and it's very easy and tempting and this is what we do all the time. You take an aspect where you are stronger than others and you look at somebody else who has the same aspect is weaker than yours so then you feel better than them and you look down upon them and that creates a disconnect and a separation which leads to suffering or the other way around, you look, you identify some weakness in yourself and compare it with a strength in another and you feel that you are lesser and you feel bad about yourself, another formula for suffering. But when you recognize that everybody has different strengths, each person has their own strengths and you have yours and nobody's perfect and uh, you regard those uh, aspects of the self as features, not as faults, that leads to acceptance. And acceptance doesn't mean that you're going to, um, you know, shrug and say, well, whatever, I'm a horrible person, I'm going to act like one. You still cultivate those virtues and those qualities that you, you um, value being fully aware of all the aspects of the self, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, but you preoccupy yourself less with, oh, what's wrong with me or what's wrong with the world and more with, well, how can I learn more? How can I improve? Not because something's wrong with you, but something can be even better. So I hope that this helps and uh, I am, uh, I'm happy to facilitate a voice dialogue um, or have a, a coaching session to, uh, to offer you some taste of the transcendent. So you have a direct embodied experience of what it is like to, to go beyond the separate self and being um, a, a taste, having a taste of being at one with all that is. So have a wonderful day and let me know in comments what you think about this and if it helps. Okay, bye.